let's read this question and see what's going on. If m and n are irrational numbers, where m does not equal n, then m and times n is also irrational. And we have to disprove this statement by means of a counterexample. We'll start off, let's first discuss what is an irrational number. Well, a rational number is anything that cannot be expressed as a fraction. For example, 22 over 7 is a fraction, therefore it is rational. Or the number 4 can be expressed as 4 over 1, therefore it's not irrational. Or even the number 2.5 can be expressed as 5 over 2, therefore it's not irrational. So examples of irrational numbers would be something like pi, as it can't be expressed as a fraction. Same with e, as it can't be expressed with a fraction. And any third you could like, so root 2, root 3, all thirds are also irrational numbers as they cannot be expressed as a fraction. So we need to come up with two numbers that, when multiplied together, give a rational number, as that will be the counterexample that we need to disprove this statement. Now we could use pi and e as our rational numbers, but the issue with using pi and e is that often they give irrational numbers, or they give numbers that are almost impossible to prove, whether they're irrational or rational. So we might want to use thirds here. So in terms of thirds, we would like it so we have the square root of one number, say x, times square root of another number, say times square root of y, will give us square root of z, where z can be simplified down to just a constant a. Now for this to be the case, that means z must be a square number. So the square numbers we have, well, we could use 1, but that won't work, because then we'll have root 1 times root 1, and that can't happen, because m and m can't equal each other, and they're both rational numbers, the square root of 1 is 1. We could use 4, but the issue with 4 is that we'll have root 2 times root 2, and that means that m and n are the same number, even though they're both irrational. We could have z equal 9, but the issue with 9 is we'll have root 3 times root 3, which means that they're the same number, which can't happen, uh, as shown in the question. Or we'll have root 9 times root 1, but neither of which are rational numbers. Now we could have 16. Now with the fact of 16 we have are 16 and 1. We can't use that because both root 16 and root 1 are rational numbers as root 16 is 4 and root 1 is 1. So we could use 8 and 2. Now this works because both the square root of 8 and the square root of 2 are rational. As the square root of 8 can be simplified down to the square root of 4 times 2. Taking the root 4 out is 2 root 2. So now we can let x equal the square root of 8 and y equal the square root of 2. So we have the square root of 8 times the square root of 2, multiplying the insides of both of these, 8 times 2, square root of 16, and the square root of 16 is just 4, which is a rational number. And therefore we've disproved the statement by means of counterexample. But we're not done there yet, as this will just get us one mark. For the second mark, we need to write a sentence to conclude. So we can say, Therefore, the statement has shown to be false by means of counterexample. And notice how in this wording here, I'm using almost similar wording to what's given in the question. Now for the marking points, I'll get one mark for a conclusion, and I'll get one mark for finding a solution. Finding two irrational numbers that when multiplied to give a rational number. And that'll give you the two marks for this question. So now that we're done with part A, let's move on to part B. So we need to sketch the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3. So what does the modulus function mean? Let's discuss that first. Essentially, the modulus function will take any pos any negative number and turn it positive, but keep the same value. For example, it will turn the modulus of minus 2 into just 2. And for positive numbers, let's say the modulus of 3, it will just stay as 3. So the modulus function takes any negative number and turns it positive, but keeps the same magnitude. And for positive numbers, it does nothing. Now that I know that, we can get on with sketching the graph. So that's my y-axis. And there's our x-axis. Now we need to sketch y equals mod of x plus 3. But what might actually be easier is let's sketch y of x plus 3 first. And we'll see why this is easier in a second. 
So when y is 0, x must be minus 3. So we'll have a point there. And when x is 0, y is 3. So we'll have a point there. And we know that, th that this must just must mean that this is a straight line connecting these two points as it follows the y equals m mx plus c straight line equation and there's no power of the x so it must be linear. Now let's investigate what happens with y equals one of x plus 3. Well when y, well sorry, when x is minus 1 we get y equals 1 plus 3 which is 4. But this is the same thing as when x is just 1. 1 plus 3 is just 4. And this will be the same for any negative for minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, etc. So what this must mean is that whenever x is negative, it has the same y value as when x is just positive, the same magnitude. Which means that this must mean that the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3 is a reflection in the y-axis. So that right there is going to be the graph of y of mod of x plus 3. Now we've done that, we can move on to the second part of the question. So we need to explain why mod of x plus 3 is greater than all of mod of x plus 3 for all real values of x. Now we can largely ignore this second highlighted part here, as this is just discussing imaginary numbers, which we don't need to know. We're more focused on the inequality here. Now what might be useful is to sketch the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3. So, the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3. Well, right away, we can see that y can never be negative. As whenever the inside of this becomes negative, the modulus function will split out a positive number. For example, when x equals minus 4, we have y equals minus 4 plus 3, which is just minus 1. Well, modulus minus 1, which is 1. So y can never be negative, which is the lowest point of y, is when x equals minus 3, i.e. this point here. So this graph must follow the graph of y equals x plus 3, like that, but then reflect itself back up when y becomes 0, as y can never be negative. And that's the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3. Now we need to show why this is lower or equal to the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3. Well, we can see that in this region here, when x is below 0, so there's the origin, and x is below 0, that we can see that the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3 is always going to be lower, this line is lower, than the graph of y equals mod of x plus 3, as all of this bit here is lower than this bit here for this whole region. So we can say that when x is below 0, the graph of mod of x plus 3 is below the graph of mod of x plus 3. But let's find out what happens when x is greater than or equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, the graphs share the same point. But also whenever x is positive, the graphs also share the same point. Which means that when x is equal to or above 0, the graph of mod of x plus 3 equals the graph of mod of x plus 3. So combining these two together, we can say that overall, graph, well, the function mod of x plus 3 is lower than and sometimes equal to the graph of mod of x plus 3. And that right there is our final conclusion. In terms of the marking for this question, we'll get one mark for this conclusion. We'll get one mark for sketching these two graphs for a total of three marks for this question.